Welcome to the IG. My name is Mackie Hall, and today we are going full 3D. We're going to teach you how to make a 3D can and a full 3D label. We're going to take a can, cat food size. We're going to figure out the dimensions, build the can and the label, and then put it all together. Now this can right here has a label height of 32 millimeters and a 90 centimeter can diameter. So those are the dimensions that we are going to use. If you want to learn how to build the whole can, start from the beginning. If you just want to learn how to make the label and then wrap it around the 3D shape, just go to that chapter. By the way, if you want to play along, this is the label that we're going to be using. It's in this 3D file, so just download it and we'll play from there. We're also going to include the can template for those of you in a rush. If you're in a rush, just go to the chapter you need. Otherwise, watch the whole thing and I promise you it is worth the time. That being said, let's go. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Now, because of what we're doing and because of our existing measurements, we're going to use some new parameters this time around. I'm going to switch on over to millimeters as our primary measurement. And our new document will have a width of 300 millimeters, a height of 300 millimeters. And if we scroll down, we are going to be using the CMYK color mode. Why? Because we're ultimately going to go to print. So when you go to print, CMYK all the way. Let's go ahead and create. Let's go ahead and bring our entire artboard into view. All right, before we get started, I want to mention that we're using the Essentials Classic Workspace. In order to switch on over to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go on up to Switch Workspace and select Essentials Classic. Now, if you're not using Essentials Classic, that is no problem. I'll point you in the right direction every step of the way. Next thing I want to mention is that we're using Smart Guides. To activate Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides, or select Control U. Next thing I want to mention is that we are using the bottom center of the page to highlight hotkey recommendations, key command recommendations, and tips and tricks. With that being said, we are building this piece on a PC if you're using a Mac or Apple device. Remember that anytime we recommend the Control key, use the Command key instead. Again, Command equals Control. As you can see, I am including my artwork at the top of the artboard. If you want to use it, you'll have plenty of opportunity to use it. All you need to do is click on the link at the bottom center of the page. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool and we'll click anywhere on our artboard. Now, remember how I described my sample can at the start of the piece. Our can is going to have a width of 90 millimeters. That means we're going to have a radius of 45 millimeters, and it's going to have a printable area height of 32 millimeters. So those are the dimensions that we are going to enter. Again, our full can width is going to be 90 millimeters, and again, with a height of 32 millimeters. Let's click OK. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and align our piece to the center of the artboard. All we need to do is go to Window, Align, or select Shift F7. Or if you're using Essentials Classic, all you need to do is select Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center, and there you go. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead and build out our can. To make it easy on ourselves, let's go on over to Outlines, and let's zoom in to our cylinder. Now that we're up close, all we need to do is copy our rectangle and then paste it in front. Again, the hotkeys for that are Control C and Control F. Once I've got that, I'm going to grab my selection tool. Let's go ahead and click and drag that directly underneath our original rectangle. Once we've got that, let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see the bottom of our rectangle. Let's deselect our shape. Let's grab our direct selection tool. Let's click on the bottom of our rectangle and let's click and drag that up. Let's hold our shift key to align it perfectly vertically, just like that. That looks good about there. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. And now let's select the bottom right corner, just like that. We'll click and drag that in just a little bit. That looks pretty good, just like that. Let's go ahead and deselect. And then let's go to the top. Let's go ahead and bring our entire artboard into view. And then let's zoom in one more time to center our piece. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and grab our original rectangle once again. We're going to copy once again. We'll go ahead and paste one more time in front. And then with our selection tool still selected, let's click and drag that directly above our original rectangle. 
Looks perfect right there. Let's zoom out one more time. Notice that when I'm dragging up above it, I'm dragging it all the way up until our lines align. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Let's grab our direct selection tool. Let's select our top path and let's click and drag down. We'll hold our shift key to have it perfectly vertical, just like that. And then we'll drag down to about there. That looks really good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now, as you know, as we continue to build this, what we're doing is we're building half of our can. Notice that we're keeping the printable area width the same and the printable area height the same. Let's go ahead and continue. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and grab our rectangle tool and let's go ahead and click and drag out a small rectangle. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and zoom into our rectangle. Let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool. And with our rectangle still selected, let's go ahead and grab any of the bevel points and click and drag to center just like that. Once that's done, let's go ahead and grab the bottom center anchor point and let's click and drag that until it intersects our middle rectangle just like that. Let's go ahead and deselect. Let's zoom out. There we go. And let's do one more thing. What we're going to do is we're going to build in some humps for the top of our can. Check out how we're going to do it. What I'm going to do with the direct selection tool still selected, let's go ahead and select our top path. We're going to copy and paste in front one more time. Let's use our directional keys to arrow up above our shape. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. And then let's go ahead and click and drag across our right anchor point. We'll arrow that to the left just a little bit. That looks good right there. Let's go ahead and go to our left anchor point just like that. And let's arrow that to the right about there that looks pretty good let's go ahead and deselect and let's go ahead and exit outlines all right now that we've got that let's go ahead and make our humps this is a pretty cool thing to do let's go ahead and grab our selection tool let's select our path and then let's go ahead and go up to effect distort and transform and select zigzag let's go ahead and change our size from 3.53 millimeters to 0.5 millimeters that's good Let's go ahead and change our ridges per segment from four to five. Reason we do that is we wanna make sure that our start point and our stop point are at the same height. That'll come to play in just a moment. Next thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and change our points from corner to smooth. Looks good right there. Let's go ahead and click okay. And let's go ahead and deselect. Now what we wanna do is we wanna include those ridges as part of our can. So what are we gonna do next? Before we take any other steps, let's go ahead and get rid of our fill. We'll add that fill in later. Let's select all of our shapes, just like that. Let's go on over to our color fill. Let's select that, and then let's make our fill transparent, just like that. Let's go ahead and deselect. That looks good right there. Let's go ahead and finalize our piece by adding our ridges. How do we do that? Well, first things first, what we need to do is we need to flip our ridges upside down. And before we do anything, Let's convert that line with effects to a wavy line. Here's how we do that. All we need to do is go to Object, Expand Appearance, and there you go, we're all set. Let's select it one more time. If we deselect it, let's go ahead and grab our Rotate tool. We'll double click on that and we'll enter 180 degrees just like that. Let's go ahead and click OK. And with that done, let's go back down to Outlines. All we need to do is hit Control Y. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Let's grab our selection tool and let's drag our lines down until it intersects with our top line. Perfect, there you go. Let's go ahead and deselect. Let's bring our entire artboard back into view. And now let's go ahead and select all of the elements of our new shape. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all those elements and convert them from individual shapes to a singular shape. How do we do that? First of all, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. That looks good right there. And then let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool. We'll select that. And our Shape Builder tool, note that our Shape Builder tool works this way. It takes all of the simple individual shapes and converts them into one complex singular shape. All you need to do is click across all of the shapes to make it happen. Check it out. Go ahead and deselect. Let's bring our entire artboard into view one more time. Let's escape outlines. We'll hit Control Y. And now let's go ahead and color our new shape. How do we do that? The way we're going to do that is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. 
And now let's go ahead and trade our fill and stroke colors. That means our fill is going to be black, our stroke is going to be transparent. We don't want a stroke color associated with, with what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and now color our can. Let's double click on our fill. And let's go ahead and find a silver kind of color. The way I do that is I'm just going to go to my grays and I'm going to pick out about a 20% filled gray. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and deselect. That looks perfect. Now that we've got that done, what we want to do is we want to select our can, apply our 3D effect to make it a full 3D can. Let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is with our selection tool still selected, let's go ahead and select our can. Next thing we're going to do is let's go up to Effect, 3D and Materials, 3D Classic, and select Revolve Classic. There you go, piece of cake. Let's go ahead and deselect. We're going to pick up on this in just a moment. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to size our label. The way we do it is a piece of cake. All we need to do is apply a little bit of simple math. Now remember that the radius of our printable area is 45 millimeters and the height of our printable area is 32 millimeters. With those two measurements, we've got all we need to figure out how big our label needs to be. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to double our radius to get our diameter. 45 times 2 is 90 millimeters. And then we're going to keep our height at 32 millimeters. Next thing we want to do is we want to figure out the circumference of our piece to get the length of our label. Well, that's a piece of cake too. All you need to do is multiply your diameter by pi. So with that in mind, when you multiply 90 times 3.1416, yeah, that's pi, you get a final width of 282.744 millimeters. We also know our height of 32 millimeters, so we can start our ribbon from there. And here's how we do it. All we need to do is we need to grab our rectangle tool, click anywhere on the artboard, and then let's add our width and height in. Again, it's 282.744 millimeters. Our height is going to be 32 millimeters, just like that. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and center our rectangle horizontally. Now that we've got that, let's grab our selection tool. Let's click and drag that up to the top of our artboard. Let's go ahead and deselect. Notice straight away that the height of our new label matches the existing label at the top of our piece. Now, if you want to create your own label, again, go ahead and create it. All you need to do is be sure that you stay within the parameters of that rectangle. Since I've already created my label, I'm going to go ahead and delete our new rectangle. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and get on with the business of adding our new label. Here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our rectangle. If you've added any elements to your rectangle, be sure they are all grouped together. Next thing we're going to do, and follow me on this, I'm going to explain this at the end of the video. What we're going to do is we're going to copy our label and then we're going to go ahead and paste it in front. With that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag our new label directly beneath our existing label. Once we've got that, what we're going to do is we're going to rasterize that piece of art. Here's how we do that. All we need to do is go to Object, Rasterize. And when our Rasterize window pops up, let's go ahead and make sure that it is still set to CMYK. Again, we're aiming to print this. Our resolution is set to high. We want the best resolution possible. In this case, it's 300 points per inch. That looks good right there. And then let's go ahead and click OK. Now that we've rasterized it, our label is now composed of raster dots as opposed to the vector lines that Illustrator is known for. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up our symbols window. Here's how we're going to do that. Let's go over to the top, select window, scroll down and select symbols, or of course, shift control F11. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and take our new label over here. Let's click and drag it right into our symbols window, just like that. Next, let's rename our new symbol label. Let's change our export type from movie clip to graphic. Let's change our symbol type from dynamic symbol to static symbol. And let's click OK. Now that we've added our symbol in, we're ready to add our label to our 3D element. Let's go ahead and deselect our label. Let's click on our 3D element. And then let's go ahead and access our 3D piece. How do we do that? Piece of cake, all you need to do is go to Window once again. Let's select Appearance. 
And then let's go ahead and click on 3D Revolve Classic. Once that's open, let's go ahead and select Map Art. And then let's go ahead and find the surface that we want to add or map our new label to. Here's how we do that. We're just going to click through the surfaces until our new surface is highlighted in red. Check it out. That's what we're looking for right there. Next step, piece of cake. All we need to do is click on Symbol. Let's select Label. And there you go right there. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now that our label is visible, let's go ahead and orient it just a little bit so that our main logo and art is centered on it. Here's how we do that. All we need to do is, of course, we can change position from any of these elements right here. Instead, I'm going to manually rotate my cat food can until it's just right. Here's how I do that. I'm going to hover over my cube until I get that rotate element right there. Next, I'm just going to click and slowly drag it over until the idiot's guide cat food is front and center. Let's keep rotating just a little bit. There you go, that's perfect right there. Now notice one thing, that our label is not shaded. So how do we fix that? Let's go back to Map Art, I'll show you. All you need to do is select Map Art one more time. Let's bring our new Map Art window into View. And then let's go ahead and select Shade Artwork right here. If we drag it out of view again, notice that our artwork is now shaded along with our can. Let's go ahead and click OK. Once we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and click OK. And let's deselect our piece, take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but there are a couple things missing. Notice that it doesn't quite look 3D enough and that the shading is just a little bit too harsh. Well, let's go ahead and fix all those elements. All right, so let's go ahead and change it. First thing we need to do is let's go ahead and select our can one more time. Let's go ahead and click on 3D Revolve Map Classic. And then let's go ahead and start playing just a little bit. First thing we want to do is let's go ahead and select more options. And let's play with the lighting just a little bit. Number one, we want to change our blend steps so that our shading doesn't look quite as staggered. So let's change our blend steps from 25 to 50. That smooths things out just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Next thing, let's brighten our piece up just a little bit. Let's take our ambient light and change it from 50 to 60 as well. Let's tab off of it. That brightens our piece up just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Let's bring our light source more to the front of our piece so that we can see the color change in our label. All we need to do to do that is let's click and drag our light source a little bit closer to front center. Let's see what that looks like. That looks way better right there. Notice the streak right across the front. That looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and play with, with the surface texture just a little bit. Notice we've got it set to plastic shading right now. Let's click and play around with it. Let's select wireframe first. Notice that that does not do what we want. Let's click on the other options as well. No shading. We've already been there. That doesn't look good. Let's check out diffuse shading. That looks pretty good, but the effect isn't as powerful as, as we had previously. So let's go back and select plastic shading. All right, now that we've addressed our light, that looks really good, but our piece still doesn't look quite as real as we want. Why? Because we don't have any perspective on it. So let's go up to the top here and let's go ahead and change our perspective from zero. Let's change it to 40 degrees, see what that looks like. Let's tab off of that. That looks way, way, way better. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and click OK. Let's deselect our shape. Yeah, that looks really good. Last thing we need to do before wrapping it up is let's go ahead and apply some shading underneath our piece. How do we do that? Let's go over to our rectangle tool. We'll click and hold that. Let's select our ellipse tool. Let's hover over the center of our rectangle. About like there, that looks good. Let's click, drag, let's hold our Alt key so that we're expanding from center. And then let's go ahead and get our rectangle to be more or less that size. Next thing we're gonna do is let's arrow over until it is more or less at center. Looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and change our fill color from gray to black. Then let's go up to the top bar. Let's select Effect, select Blur, let's select Gaussian Blur, and let's change our blur from 20 to 25. Let's get a nice blur on that just like this. We'll tab off that. Let's click OK. And then the last thing we want to do is let's give some opacity to our shape. Let's go ahead and click on Transparency, either on the sidebar right there or under Window, Transparency or Shift Control F10. And let's change the opacity from 100 to 70%. Let's tab off of that. Looks pretty good right there. 
Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's bring it behind our shape. We'll right click on it, select arrange, send to back. Now we've got that. Let's arrow our shadow up until it fits our piece. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and save our piece this time around. I'm going to save it as final. Let's go ahead and save. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and create an export file for our cat food can so we can send it to the client or whoever. Here's how we're going to do that. Let's go ahead and drag across our shape and our shadow. Let's select Edit Copy, Edit Paste in front. And with our selection tool still selected, let's click and drag our new shape directly beneath our original shape. That looks good right there. Once we've got that, let's select Object, Rasterize, and once again, we're going to rasterize with a color mode of CMYK. We're going to make sure our resolution is high at 300 points per inch. Let's set our background at transparent in case we want to put it in front of anything. And then let's go ahead and select OK. Once that piece is done, let's go ahead and create our output file. All we need to do, once again, let's select Edit, Copy. Let's create a new document. This time around, since we're going to be sending it out to a client, they'll probably want to print it. Let's go ahead and select print from the top bar, and then let's select letter. That's the American standard. If you're anywhere else, perhaps select A4 instead. Let's click create. Let's go back to edit, select paste. Let's make sure it's aligned center horizontally and vertically. Let's deselect our shape, and let's go ahead and save our piece as a PDF. That format, almost anybody can open it. In this case, I'm going to rename my piece once again, Final. Select Save. Save one more time. Deselect our piece if it was selected and admire our work. With that being said, we've got a hell of a new can of cat food and we are done. Nice job. Now, remember when I told you to rasterize the label before doing the 3D wrap around the can? Here's why. Check out these two cans. Note the top one is rasterized, bottom one is vector. Right away, check out the banding on the vector label. Get a little closer and check out what happened to the cat. Want your client or whoever to be impressed? Rasterize your label before doing the 3D wrap and then do it again when putting together your final piece. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.